Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessories, go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighting. Go to pelican.com. And the 153 Bait Company. For all your hard and soft bait needs, go to the 153anglers.com. Now let's get this show started. What's going on, everybody? Dan Perry in the house. What is up? Thank you for having me on the show, man. I, this is the first time I've ever been on the OG show. I apologize. Yeah, for let's real? do it. Let's I go. Thought, I thought you were on before, man. No, man. That, this well, I, apo- I apologize. I apologize, man. <laughs> this is a this is a good one to have you on. I know you're a huge quantum fan, so uh, yeah. this is going to work out great. Nicholas Beltran in the chat already. What's up, brother? Hope you're doing well. He said good evening, up, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Jay is out. Had a little mountain bike accident. He's uh, at home recovering. He's okay. He'll be all right. And uh, he's not going to be here next week as well because he's going to uh, sign some paperwork on a new uh, new place down in 10 IC. Oh. So, uh, Dan, you might have to come back next week. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be here. Well, welcome, everybody. Got an epic show um, with uh, Shane Fetty from uh, Quantum. We're going to talk to him. But uh, real quick, I want to shout out, uh, let me share this up. This weekend, um, down on, I believe it's Lake Lanier. Um, Yes, Lake Lanier. Uh, CCKA is having a benefit tournament for the Georgia High School and the Country Country Kids Christmas Benefit Tournament. Um, If you can't show up, you could still sign up, um, help these guys out. Um, they got 18 folks signed up already, but, uh, it's for a good cause. Um, they're trying to help some high school anglers out and some kids for Christmas and things like that. I'll drop the link to the, uh, tourney X down in the uh, chat and you can also sign up or, uh, go donate to, uh, veterans kayak fishing as well. Just go to veterans kayak fishing.com. Help those guys out, man. Um, great cause love what they're doing. Uh, I know we donated some stuff as well, so uh, they got some cool prizes and stuff they're going to give away. So check yeah, that out. Shout out to Freddie Garza down there, always doing great things, great TD, one of the best TDs in the country. Yeah, man, uh, Freddie's Freddie's uh, TD for that. I know uh, some of my new canoe folks. Uh, oh, I totally forgot to pull down the new canoe banner from last night's show, <laughs> but. Uh, um, they're uh, they're doing some cool stuff, man. Uh, both in the veteran community and the high school community. So shout out to those guys, man. If you guys can help in any way, shape, or form, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, another big announcement, Mr. Dan Perry. First segment of his new show is going to air tomorrow afternoon, two p.m. on uh, all the podcast platforms. So if that's where you're listening. If you're uh, watching on Facebook, I think I got that scheduled for 3 o'clock. YouTube's 2 o'clock, so catch that. You're talking all about knots, right? Yeah, we uh, the new show, Advanced Kayak Angler, where, you know, I left the um, I left the reel down, and then whenever <laughs> I left, I got replaced by somebody who's much better than me, Drew Gregory. <laughs> uh, you know, so Jimmy upgraded, got a better host, and uh, I'm starting a new show where we're just going to absolutely geek out on stuff. And I thought, what better way to show how far we can go with something that's usually pretty mundane, knots. Everything you want to know about knots. I got two guys who are not freaks. I tried to have a third, Mark Edwards. We tried to have him on, and he, uh, he had an issue and a uh, technical issue. wasn't able to have him on, but we'll have him on soon. And uh, so you will hear that during the podcast. But, yeah, we're knots. Just and 45 minutes of knots. No, it was a, it was almost an hour, dude. I just uploaded it before we started this show. It was like 58 minutes of knots. So if you want to learn how to tie some knots, I, I guarantee you listen to it. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to it. So I didn't listen to it yet. I just uploaded it. We'll see. I'm going to check it out tomorrow, man. It's, so. it's kind of one of those things you put it, 
to the background, even if you don't want to watch it now, you think about it later in the off season, whenever you're, you're trying yeah. to you know, get a little bit better and you want to learn to do something new. Every year I try to learn a new and better not because it seems like they're always getting better. So, you know, hold that one, just kind of put in your save podcast and, and hold that one till the, till the off season and try to learn a new not. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. Woo. I'm stoked. Let's get this party started, man. Let's get uh, Mr. Sean Fetty, right? Did I say yeah. that right? Yeah, you did. All right. Let's get Shane in here. Shane, welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, we Hi, met at How ICAST. you guys doing? Uh, hey. get, good, man. Good. I uh, was fortunate enough to meet you down at ICAST. Uh, got to talk to you for a bit. You showed me some new things from Quantum, and I was like, we need to, we need to talk about this with the good people watching at home. So his Dan's pointing to his quantum reels there in the background, but, uh, dude, uh, give us a little background on you, man. Like how you got into fishing, how you got working with quantum and all that good stuff, man. And what you do there. Yeah. Yeah. First off, thank you guys for stopping by the ICAST booth. We put a lot of effort into that every year and for you guys to come by and, and now we get a, a couple, a little bit of content put out there too. We really appreciate it. So fishing for me, uh, starting out was pretty simple. I, I kind of grew up, uh, the family kind of like catfishing and I grew up in Virginia. So we have nice. some tidal water out there. So you get best of both worlds. You can catch a, a flounder one day. You can catch a catfish another day, <clears throat> a lot of croaker. But, uh, as you know, time, time went on, I kind of got into sports. So I have a little, like a competitive edge to, to me. And I did, I played football, went all the way up through college. <clears throat> and, uh, one of the winners after college, after the college season, um, after one of the winners, I was watching television and, uh, I saw there was college fishing. And so <clears throat> that, that was something brand new to me. I didn't really hear about started watching a little bit, a couple commercials came by and I, I saw a quantum commercial and they had a couple AutoCAD type uh, cut scenes, like two little second cut scenes of AutoCAD. And they had a little cut scenes of their test lab. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm getting into engineering. So that's kind of what I want to do. I want to match kind of like some fishing and some engineering together. So I, I reached out to to a, actually a bunch of companies that I wanted to work for in fishing and out of fishing and uh, an internship popped up for Zebco and Quantum. So I went ahead and did that. So I packed all my bags and in, in my little forerunner. I drove a thousand seven hundred miles to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and wow. that internship uh, ended up turning into a, a turn into a job. So. <clears throat> That's very so cool. that's how I ended up here. Yeah, that's very cool. That what was also like Golden Hurricanes, right? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, it is the hurricanes, but is there are uh no, what is it? I don't actually I don't even know. The, it's, it's something like that. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh but it was a big difference. You know, now I'm in a landlocked uh state, and so I don't have that saltwater touch anymore. But uh, the great thing about Tulsa is you can jump on a plane at 30, 40 minutes to Dallas. And then from Dallas, you go anywhere in the world. So yeah. um, I get I get some fresh water when I fresh water here in the state. And then I try to travel a little bit for some saltwater stuff. But it's been good so far. That's cool, man. That's cool. I know you were talking to me at ICAST how you kind of have worked your way up the ladder. Like you had to start with that internship and then. Now you're part of quality control, right? Right. Well, <clears throat> I, I started with the internship and that a uh, engineering position came up. So I jumped right into the engineering side. So some of the test lab fixtures and the testing uh, methods, I helped develop a couple of those. There was a lot done before me, so I'm not going to take all, all the credit because we have a lot of great guys here that have been working for, I mean, quantum has been around for for a while you know so uh, a lot of great tests have uh, been developed here and um uh, two guys run run the show in the test lab and uh so i helped develop a couple things there and then i helped 
a couple of the materials and and uh, components of a couple reels and part of a team that helped develop some of the the product there. And so for that was that was for about you know three years. And then I'm I'm really I'm a really avid fisherman, and so I can really connect the consumer to the the product really well. And so that kind of what led me to do more project product management stuff. So that's that's what I'm doing now. That's what I've done for the last year and a half is focused on the product management side, which kind of connects the the real to the consumer and makes sure everything sounds and feels feels the same. You know, so our messaging, I want to make sure that when we tell a consumer something, the product delivers on that. Um, but it also looks like that too. So it, it's a pretty, it's a three-headed spear really that I'm just trying to make it all mesh and fit really nicely together. So that's interesting, man. Well, I got pulled up on the screen. This is like one of your testing things that you put the reels through. Um, and you guys had these set up at ICAST and I was kind of blown away. And I, I described, I would, I jumped in a pot, one of our other shows, um, that actually aired this morning and the guys were talking about products from ICAST. And I was talking about the stuff I saw in your guys's booth you know, um, which we'll dive into more, but I was telling them about these, these testing units that you have, you guys put reels in there and you run them like what a million cycles a piece or something. Um, and, and it's, you know, you guys are trying to figure that it's, you know, somewhere around like a five-year span or something you were, you were explaining to me, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. And I, at ICAST, we had, uh, we had a trip endurance machine, which opened and closed the bail and for bait cast drills, push the thumb button, trip it, push the thumb button, trip it. And then we had also a gear endurance station and the picture that you showed, that was a result from the, uh, gear endurance. So what we end up doing for that particular test is we put a five pound load on the on the reel and we crank the handle x amount of times so sometimes depending on the level of product because uh, you have to think that we make zebco 202 so that's a very we don't have to be as crazy and uh, it doesn't have to hold up necessarily as much as something that costs 200 bucks right so sure sure, um, sure. each each product level has its own set of tests and we also test our product to failure also. So uh, the what you see there, we're running that reel until it literally blows up. So it, it's gone, we saw 20 million cycles on there yeah. and it's still going now. So I'm sure it's probably around 21. It's still on the machine now, so uh, it hasn't <laughs> blown up yet. So, but just to think, you know, 20 million cranks with five pound load on there, that's a lot of fish. And yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a lot of seasons, so. Uh, some guys are harder on their equipment than others. Uh, when you're cranking, especially when you're cranking or throwing big spinner baits, your bait caster reels really wear down quickly. So we just ensure that you can last a few seasons on on that reel. And the biggest thing is because of our testing, we're able to do, to say, hey, we trust our product so much that. All quantum product, if it has the quantum name all the way down from our lowest product to our highest, there's a five-year warranty. So you have any problems in that five-year window, we'll service it. We'll, we'll fix it for you. So I, I can say for sure that I've, uh, you know, I've called quantum whenever I had a problem, uh, a rod I broke the tip on. It was me. And y'all were, I mean, customer service at quantum is amazing. They replaced it. Um, and if you ever, I've had so many quantum reels that, it's one of the best things about your company that I really love. And this isn't blowing smoke. Like I have old reels. I could show you one. I just retired. I, I wish I would have had with me. I got it. It has to be like the first smoke. I bought it from Swindle whenever he was on the team. He had used it for a year and uh, absolutely abused it. And I've used it ever since. But one of the best things about Quantum is you can get the old parts. Yeah. So you can always service your reels for a long time. It's not whenever they go to a new model that they're going to discontinue those parts anymore. They're reels that you can keep for a long time. And that's, that's something some other companies don't do as well. I should have grabbed some photos, man. I got some old school quantum reels from like mid nineties, like 95, <laughs> 96, like that are still turning. 
that are that are still just as good today as they were when they came out of the box. So it's cool, man. It's it was interesting to me, man, because you know, being at ICAST, you're walking through some of these other booths, and you know, they got uh, you know, a reel up on a pedestal with lights shining on it. And I was pretty impressed that quantum was like we're going to show you how we, you know, put these things to the test. And it was pretty cool, man. And it was very unique. Um, I, I thought that was cool. It caught my eye. That's what drew me into the booth initially. Cause I was like, what the hell's going on over here? <laughs> and I went and checked it out. And I think the way I described it on the, on the show that aired today was like, I was like one of those kids watching where, uh, one of the coin pusher machines where you drop a quarter in and then it pushes on the oh. shelf and you're trying to get it to fall on the next shelf and push down. I was like, come on, is it going to break this time? Is it going to break <laughs> this time? It never broke, but it was, it was kind of cool, man, just to see the setup and what you guys, uh, what you guys do to put like, you know, the products through the, the paces and make sure everything's good. So my one question to that was like, all right, so you got one that fails. Do you guys just pull another one out of, you know, that was just manufactured and put another one in to make sure that quality is going the same as it was when you started with real one versus real, you know, 10,000 or whatever it may be. Right, yeah. So uh, throughout each each reel, I mean, we really te we really build our reels from the ground up. So it some reels take up to two years to develop. But through that, usually it's like one year, one and a half years. Through that time period, there's different phases. And so we'll have the first production run. We'll have a couple other production runs. And uh, basically each phase, we put our reels through the ringer. And we have di uh, different levels of test for each phase as well. And we, have, we test different things. So um, we'll get a, a group of 12 reels, for example, put them on the machines, run them until they break and if one ends up breaking we'll pull it off we'll examine we'll open up the reel look at what material is wrong uh if the material is wrong look if the tolerances are wrong and i mean we're using literally we're li literally using microscopes to figure out different problems and once we figure out the problem we'll report that to our factory and then they'll send us some more samples to try to fix the issue and we'll put those until they pass that phase test, it doesn't go on until the next phase. It doesn't go on to the next phase. So we have uh, multiple uh, phases through the year and, and and we just torture these things literally all year. That's cool. And, and so like the stuff that you saw at ICAST, uh, th that was our, our phase. That was one of our, our later phases. So, and you, and you know how smooth those things felt when you were there. Yeah. Um, it's going to get even better than that, you know, coming this September. So nice. <clears throat> I'm excited. I'm excited. Well, I think that leads into the, uh, the new smoke X, um, which I'm stoked for. We just talked about, I'm probably going to go broke this fall, uh, <laughs> buying a bunch <laughs> of reels. Great. Yeah. I love it, dude. I love it. That's uh, I'll pull the picture back up, but that's exactly what's, uh, in that that testing machine um but tell us about the new smoke x series man <clears throat> yeah so you guys mentioned the color um that was one of the big things a lot of our reels uh like historically or uh kind of conservative is you know black white and you really can't go wrong with with those colors i mean black looks great on a and on any rod and everything but uh with with the new uh generations coming in uh, there's a new type of fisherman coming out. One of the biggest things for this project was to come out with a, a color that's on trend, but not be overly, uh, just not neon green, you know? Yeah. So, um, so I'm, we, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying neon green, but this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's, it's so funny to see the different uh, generations and, and how some people like the green, some people don't. Uh, but like, uh, one of the things that leads led to the green stuff is, I mean, you look around at all your Nike, all the, like the soccer kids that are now fishing in the off season, they all yeah. have bright neon green shorts and orange shorts. And so, uh, there's a place for it all. I am kind of like with you, I, I, I'm not, I don't go too crazy, but you know, back to the smoke X, 
this uh, we call it Calvary blue. It's a color that you can see that you probably will see on like Toyota Tundras and, yeah. and, and uh, there's a couple other bikes and kind of some like, uh, you know, machine rugged type of equipment or vehicles, you know, and then we paired it up with the bronze color, <clears throat> which you'll also see in hiking and, and different uh, mountain climbing and things like that. So it's a really good color. Um, our, our cosmetic team did a really good job of trying to find the right mix. And we actually did, uh, you know, a color study. I mean, we get really, when we try to choose a color, we get really in the details with it, did a color study. And actually uh, the guy who came up with this color scheme, this is one of his original color schemes. So it was, this project was set on the right foot in the beginning. So, and that's just the color uh, moving to, there's a ton of features uh, on this reel. Um, Dan, you probably use the smoke S3 at some point, right? Yeah, that's so, that too. so, uh, yeah, the smoke X3, that's like our flagship product and that sits around $180 and it has all the little gadgets, all the, the durable features, the smooth features that you really need. And so, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to make a cool reel, but I really would, I want something that works too. I'm, I'm more practical. I'm not, I, I wear a gray t-shirt like I'm not too fancy. Um, so I let them do that. And then I try to make sure we had a really durable product. So we grabbed our best platform, the smoke S three, put some different colors on it and made the smoke X. So, um, the things you can expect from the smoke X and I have one here. Um, we got the the speed bearings on here, so the spool spins. We can have a full conversation. It's still spinning. You can't really see it. I uh, got oversized handle knob. You got the uh, line like memo on the side, so you can uh, keep track of what you put on your spool. Just like the Smoke S3, we have the oversized spool. And for those that like to use the heavier braids or the heavier mono or heavy any heavy pound test, really. That really helps out a lot because you can put a, a castable, a full cast length um, of line on there. And you can also, uh, when for kayak guys and stuff, you guys you guys will switch out baits a lot. So you, you can go a whole season and still have the original line on there because you're going to be cutting off, you know, a foot of line every time you change, change a new allure on. Um, so going past the spool, we got the, the goal wing side plate. So you don't have to worry about the side plate dropping in the water. Yeah, that's nice. And, uh, one of the thing, one of the things that really makes this real different and, and it, the smoke S three has the same technology is our ACS 4.0 cast control. Uh, we were the originators with the ACS cast control. And so over time now we're up to our fourth version and um, a guy, uh, he was an engineer for us named HK. He 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 was like an engineer s since the beginning of bait cast drills, and so he had years and years of experience. And basically, what this ACS 4.0 cast control is is a spring-loaded cartridge. So this right, this cartridge moves and it's spring-loaded. And when you make a really hard cast, this cartridge moves outward with centrifugal force and it's spring loaded so that it will retract at a certain time. So when you make a really hard cast, this cartridge will move out a little bit. And then on the back half of the cast, the cartridge retracts back in so you can get a little more float at towards the end of the cast. And also when you're pitching and flipping, the RPMs of the spool is not going to be as high. So when you make that pitch, this cartridge stays put. It doesn't have to move out as far. So uh, basically, we basically we kind of mastered a system that really adapts to your cast control style. So I don't know how many times you guys have been uh, pitching and flipping, and then right behind you a school bus, and then so you turn around, you make that hard cast. And you backlash everywhere. So this Sounds can well, right? adapt to it. Yep. <laughs> so this cast control adapts to that type of situation and any situ uh, any type of situation where you need to make short casts and then make a long cast. So 
uh, that's really what sets this real apart from from all the others. And it's patented. You know, only we have it. That's super cool, man. Um, I dig it. I, that's the biggest struggle I think uh, a lot of guys make when they starting bait casting is like knowing how to adjust the reels. I'm giving you a show topic right now, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like adjusting that bait caster so you don't backlash. Um, like just recently, man, like I threw some braid on a reel cause I went, went to, uh, frog fish, you know, and I threw on some heavy braid and didn't adjust my reel. And it was like backlash after backlash. And I was just like, what am I doing? Like, I need to readjust this. And I threw it on like one of my crappiest reels. That was my first problem, you know, but, um, it's cool that that thing automatically adjusts on the fly like what you're talking about with that brake system. Right. Um, and and it, it's not powered by batteries, so you can trust it in any condition and you don't have to charge it or anything. So that's the best part about it. Yeah, that's very <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make weird noises. Right, right. No. <laughs> and and that's just – and uh, the other thing about the Smoke X is it's a really complete family. We got four different gear ratios. So you deep crankers have something all the way up to the, the, the jig fisherman. And then we also have left-handed, right-handed versions of that. So nice. uh, it's a good wide range, good solid wide range. And uh, that's just for the bait cast reels. For spinning reels, and spinning reels is really one of our strengths. Yeah. We had uh, a brand called Fenor uh, for a while, and we learned a lot of stuff and took a lot of stuff from saltwater. And you know how saltwater, they'll use some big trolling reels but the, it's mainly spinning reels after that right so we took a lot of technologies we developed a lot of technologies in-house and uh, we came out with our the the smoke spinning reels uh, these reels have the oversized handle knobs we got the titanium bell wire so we can test well, we can you can bend it. this and it won't we'll deform Yep, it won't rust, um, so you can always count on that. And I heard a couple guys uh, going through our booth at ICAST is like, I can't tell you how many of these I, I step on or something. <laughs> these bales, and they, and so then we got uh, the braid band spool. <clears throat> uh, braid is getting better and better, so it's getting more on trend. So got that braid band to help you out. Uh, we have a multi-layer drag stack here, so it is really smooth on the low end of, of things all the way up to the high end of the things. And uh, I say all this, and it's all backed and tested by our test lab. Uh, so we have a, a drag endurance machine in our test lab that has a little squiggly line. Uh, when it, Basically, it pulls a, a run uh, of line, and you can see the exact smoothness and the variance between the, the drag runs. And uh, that's really big for us. And that drag machine, go, I kind of bouncing back and forth between the test lab and the product, but that's what really runs, runs our product is our test lab. So uh, with our test lab, we can also simulate actual fish runs. So we've, we've gone out and tested uh, drag runs in real life of, of Marlin and all these other species. And so we can hook up this spinning reel and then put that data that we captured, put it in the uh, drag machine and we can make that s simulated run. So uh, I'll say Marlin, you know, tick, 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 and then just darts away. Uh, we can simulate that, those type of things with our, um, our drag our drag uh, materials, our drag components, and everything. So <clears throat> the uh, the test lab's a big deal for us. That's pretty wicked, uh, man. That you guys can simulate like that. Yeah, I, you you guys probably have attempted or seen those uh, marlin fisher uh, those marlin simulators that you go to like a, either a trade show oh, or a carnival yeah. and something. Yeah. That's exactly what we can do in our test lab. That's interesting. <clears throat> I, 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 yeah, I really say the the S three spinning reels that I have. I think I have four of them. You know, I, I love to finesse fish, but they're so underrated. Like, I, you know, you see a lot of people talking about other brands. Man, quantum spinning reels. The the smokes are 
Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the best spinning reels I've ever had. I mean, like hands down, there's no doubt about it. So if if you're thinking about you're thinking about quantum, like take it from me, thumbs up on those spinning reels. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's Dan, Dan these, Perry these, approved. That, that's what I want to know. When, when can I get them? Yeah, when it what <laughs> so what what's the price point on the spinning reels, and then when can uh, uh, folk series to be coming out? So uh, the the spinning reels and the bait cast reels are one forty nine ninety nine, and they're they'll both be available in September. Uh, they'll start trickling in stores in, in September and October. So you're, you're so, going down in price from the regular smokes from the smokes, right? Right. right. Okay. Yep. All right. Thirty to save you thirty dollars from the smoke they have out now, which is great, and get the new one for for even cheaper. Very I cool. like it. Exactly. Yep. I just bought three more reels. <laughs> I have some yep, I you, upgrade, so, yeah. yeah, we got three different sizes too. So you're going to need your your trout for fifteen. You're going to need your twenty five and thirty for other stuff. So you might need nine reels. Uh, I, I need more than that, bro. I need more than that. <laughs> and the uh, the last the last feature on this spinning reel, um, we call it real engine design, and this is what really keeps our gears strong and durable and keeps our reels able to be at our test lab and uh, get that five-year warranty that, that we trust. So uh, it's a, it's a one-piece aluminum body. And during the manufacturing process, what we do is we take a drill bit and we drill one time uh, vertically and one time horizontally to make sure that pinion and that drive gear are perfectly aligned. And uh, basically what you get is you get this this uh, nice alignment of your your gears all the way down to your oscillation gear um, just for and that just helps keep everything in line and, and and tight because some of the traditional reels they'll have a side cap and during the manufacturing process it may wiggle their tolerances might get off but when you take an aluminum frame and you only drill once uh, vertically and horizontally, those things are going to be the same the whole time. So uh, we're a big believer in that. And that's one of the re reasons why we can have a five-year warranty on our spinning reels also. Nice. That's super cool, man. Yeah. I mean, if you're hitting that thing multiple times with a drill, I've seen it just being, having a little bit of machine shop background, like it, it doesn't always poke in the same spot. So I could see how that would make a difference, especially when you're talking about such minute tolerances, you know, with, with the gears and the fishing reel and things like that. Right. Right. That's pretty wicked, man. Is, pretty is wicked. the smoke HD still going to be available or are y'all doing away with that? So right now the smoke HD is still available. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, as you know, as time goes on, there might be something better. I can't leak anything, uh -oh. but oh, there might snap. be. Oh, snap. But, all right. All right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but yeah as, as time goes here. on. <laughs> Don't get in trouble, Shane. Don't get fired, man. <laughs> hey, I, I'm just as excited as you guys because I'm using these products too. So, you know, I, I know how important that smoke HD is. And I right. I try to plant a flag and say, hey, we need, we got to have something. We got to have something like the 200 size reel. So nice. I was retying my for a tournament this weekend, retying my frog rod and my swim jig rod. And I have HDs on both of them. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they're great cranking rods. All our pros, they, that's their cranking rod go to. Um, it's got that, the ergonomics of that thing allows your wrist to go down and the rod tip down in the water and it just fits real nice. So it, it feels like a, like you were talking about tolerances on the HD, it feels really like the tolerances are really small. I mean, I, I am no engineer by any means, but it's so smooth that it feels tight, like, uh, yeah. you know, like really well made. I mean, all of them do, but especially the HD, it, it feels super sturdy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the, 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 one of the advantages of having like equipment from a company that's been around a long time is you learn from each project and uh, the smoke hd for example we had a whole we we really looked into the gears our our bait cast engineer went down and figured out hey um let's move these gears around a little bit and change the tolerances and that's what we ended up with those really smooth smoke hd gears 
And we put those same exact gears in the Smoke S3 and the Smoke X now. So as time goes on, you know, you just you just pick up on things and makes those minute uh, uh, improvements. So <clears throat> it's super it's a, lot cool, of, a lot of investigation and a lot of tear down. But the other thing is um, customers, customer feedback. You know, every time there's a problem, we're very easy to um, you know, reach and we co we capture every single thing. So you, you mentioned the customer service, how good they are. Um, they really are. They keep track of everything, um, all the little notes and everything they take. They that goes straight to our quality team. There's and they and they the in the building, our customer service is right next to the product development. So they have a problem. They walk right on over, and we try to figure it out. Uh, do they I'll walk go. in and they're like, Shane, what did you do this time? <laughs> this guy just called. Like, pretty pretty much, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, along with the Smoke X. Re uh, release of the reels is there going to be are you changing a line of rods as well <clears throat> so with the smoke x we're going to do three combos we're not doing any standalone com uh any standalone rods but we have three combos and these three combos are really targeted at the three kind of major categories of techniques we have a finesse combo that has a 25 size spinning reel with a a medium light action rod and then we have a heavy combo that's a 7.4 heavy and has a, the high speed smoke x uh, bait caster on there and then we have our cranking rod which has an e-glass composite blank and um, if those of you that are familiar with the old kvd cranking rods oh, you know, yeah. it's a very it's very similar to that a, a little bit of improvement um, and that's paired with a six to one bait cast drill. And the really cool feature on the cranking rod is the magnetic hook keeper. This is a yeah. brand new patent from Quantum. What? And uh, I actually I actually developed this. And um, one of the things, okay. one of the problems. Hey, puff your shirt out a little, man. Puff it out. I yeah, actually yeah. developed this, all right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the problems I have is I throw like 100 rods in the rod locker. Yeah. And because I fished a couple days, and I also like to fish for multiple species. So I got crappie rods in there. I got uh, bait cast rods. And then I have a couple trolling rods for when hybrid or, or, or busting. So one of the biggest problems is with cranking rods, this front treble hook here likes to swing around and get caught up in, in the other reel's line. And That's so right. basically I was, I was trying to come up with a way to, to prevent that without having a wrap or some sort of cover that you have to take off. So what we did was we put a magnet, a magnet within the rod blank, and that keeps this really tight and secure to the rod blank. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, catch when you're pulling the rod out or while you're going down the bank and it's shaking. So it just stays if, put. If you're listening to this rather than watching on the, it's got a hook keeper on the back, not the, not a circular kind. It's got one where you can actually put your, your hook through the bottom without having to take your whole bait out. Love that. And then above it, it's got a magnet, which will hold your front hook. If you have a double treble hook bait, it, it it's keeping the hook on the rod. So yeah, that's a, that's clutch, man. So I'm going to share this up. This is from iCast. This is on our Facebook page too. But, uh, you know, Shane was showing me this in the booth and I was like, no way. I need to take a video of this. And I like sat there and shook that rod and the hook never came off the rod. That's awesome. Especially kayak guys. We're, or kayak women, shouldn't say guys, where we're so afraid <laughs> to hook ourselves. Like uh, like my buddy on my on my team, my KFL team this week, he hooked himself three different hooks. He, he had to, he got two out in the hospital with a third. Oh but, uh, man, you know, we're so afraid of hooks. So having if you have your rods alongside you along the gunnel or your kayak, if you have two rods up there, you're not going to have that problem with your your hooks all over the place. That's a that's all right. right. You, yeah, and um, the, one of the things. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Oh, the one thing I was going to get up real quick about this is um, uh, 
uh, Josh and Brad were asking me about this. They're like, what about the balance of the rod? Does a magnet throw that off? And I'm like, dude, that rod was like super balanced in my hand. It didn't feel like it was like heavy weighted forward of the grip or anything like that. I don't know what that magnet is, but it's super light. I didn't even notice it was there. Like, so I'm sure that question is going to come up. Like maybe you can touch on that chain too. Um, you know, like how you guys balance that out on the rod. Right. Yeah. So, um, and with all, all three of these combos, uh, um, a lot of guys try to balance the rods so that like when you're at a trade show, you hold your rod up and you put your finger and it just sits there and balance. Well, put a reel on it and then it throws everything out of whack. So what I did was I took our smoke X reels. I took our bait cast, our, our 25 size. I put them on those rods and I really tried to put the reel seat in different locations and really try to balance that out so that you wouldn't feel the the for the extra weight that's the magnet has now as far as the magnet it is it is a very small amount of weight um and the other thing is when you're cranking you should have the rod tip in the water you know so you're sure. for you're leaning forward anyways so um if you if you really are like sensitive with the weight the weight it's just it's just it's a natural feel that the rod tip is going to go lower than your body when you're cranking so, um, but like I said, um, all these reels and all these combos, the reels and rods are perfectly matched, perfectly balanced to where your hand position should be. That's where the fulcrum of the, of the, the whole product is. So, yeah, that was, that was huge, man. I remember you, you were like, come check this out. And I was like, what the heck? Like my mind was blown. I, it would, it's like one of those things, like, how long has fishing been around? How long have people been like getting their treble hooks caught up in things and nobody's <laughs> thought of this yet? Like it's such yeah. an ingenious thing, but it's huge. And in the way you guys did it and executed it, um, as far as balance and everything, I think it's, it's super cool. How was your day at work? When have you thought of that? Like, well, uh, I don't really, I probably, my boss probably shouldn't know, but I don't really come up with any good ideas here. So <laughs> I, I really, if I'm on the water or if I'm driving to work or whatever, that's where the ideas come in. It's like, and that, and that's what we take real serious here too, is you got to go out and, and fish the product because real day problems are going to show up when you're out there on the water. And uh, so that's, that's, I was experiencing that problem when I was um, out fishing. And one of the things that ended up happening was I had a couple rods laying on, on the deck of the boat. And when I was going down, the front treble hook kept on getting caught in carpet. And so yeah. I was like, man, I, I'm so, this is so annoying going down there and trying to rip it off the carpet. <laughs> and uh, so that's really where it kind of, that first spark kind of hit. Wait, was that like, oh yeah, you knew right then this is, a, this is going to be good. Yeah. The first thing I did was, of course, we had to do a lot of background and see, because there's so many patterns out there. Um yeah. And so, um, you know, we, we put a claim in the sand and said, and, and did the right paperwork and everything. Um, but before that, you know, you gotta do a lot of research and everything. Um, there's a lot of magnetic type hook keepers that you can wrap around the rod, but when you're casting and using that pro that type of product, the line gets caught up or when you're making a cast and stuff. So this just eliminates all your problems. You know, it, it's just, it's, convenient it's in the rod blank it's it's seamless so, so the, the, because it was internal you were able to get a i guess a utility patent on it <clears throat> right right did they at least give you a copy of the patent since it was yeah. your idea? well, <laughs> well no patent no patents happen overnight so you know this is uh it's claimed as patent pending um and and so we'll have to wait, you know, how, however many years they decide to say, oh, here's the actual uh, patent for it. So it's still going through uh, all, all that, all those, all that politics yeah. stuff. So, and Avoid. sometimes as far as patent goes, it's very confusing. Uh, I mean, sometimes we'll get a patent a couple years, like the actual patent a couple years later, even though that we've had it and we've had the protection on it for a couple of years. It just, it all depends on how they feel that day, whether they want to pat, push some paper through or not. So, 
but uh, yeah. we are we are really um, excited, and hopefully that might sneak in some other Rod series too. <clears throat> hmm. I like it. I like it. Our boy Ryan Milford's in the chat. We miss you, bro. Come back. But uh, he said he snagged uh, his de- drag strap on the front of his kayak. Got to pull to the side and get that undone. That's always a pain <laughs> in the butt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've probably done that a couple times, too. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. Uh, one more thing on the magnet, too, is I made sure – I tried to think of everything. I made sure that you can use um, – like a 6xd all the way down to a 1.5 so you got a wide range of crankbaits um that you could use this product on and um all those will fit because you know the larger crankbaits the hooks are a little further apart so i i try to make sure that it would fit that wide assortment so so here's a good question and maybe a thought because you're saying it might end up in some other rod series and we're i was talking to the guys about this you know, and uh, one of the guys had asked, well, on a drop shot rod, like if they put that magnet in there, could you ma- like put the drop shot to that? Because you never know what to do with that damn weight. Everybody oh, like yes. wraps <laughs> it around the butt end of the rod and things like that. Like, like you have yeah. to get a calcium. Chain, right we just now, give you probably. another great idea for, for tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I put uh... – <laughs> I'll put your guy's name on the on the patent. So <laughs> no, you can take it. You can take it, man. Just remember us when you're big time. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the the only thing it doesn't work on is like salt water. Sometimes there's the uh, the stainless hooks. Um, yeah. So uh, it depends, you know. But as far as fresh water goes, all those hooks are, you know, are, are made Sticky of some sort of steel. So, yep. That's cool, man. That's cool. So we talked about all the high end stuff, the new stuff you got coming out, but I know you guys got um, some stuff um, coming out on the lower end of the spectrum too that you guys have been wor- working on, and you know, for maybe some of you beginners and things like that out there, you know, you're not looking to spend you know 140 bucks, 180 bucks on a reel. You guys got some some budget friendly stuff that's got some cool stuff in it too, right? Right. Yeah. So. Also for Quantum, we're coming out with, or we're in September and October, we'll have the Throttle Series. So the Throttle Series has been in, in the portfolio for a little while now, and so we kind of refreshed that. Uh, ha- we built a new spinning reel from the ground up. Um, this is it here. So we got a couple sizes in this one, all the way from, uh, we got 25 and 30, of course, and uh, we have a 15 and or a 10 size and these reels are mapped at <laughs> six, $60 and they have a ton of a ton of the features that you have on the higher end product like this thing has 11 ball bearings this thing has the braid band and oversized handle non-slip handle knob so this is a really smooth reel. It's brand new tooling. So this is all the tolerances and everything are, are, preci- are precise. You know, as the more you make, then the reason we kind of refresh products, um, you know, every so often is because those tool, tools are going to get worn. So you need to get this while, now while it's while it's perfectly off the press. So, <laughs> um, and then we got uh, bait cast reels too. We have. Our low, we have a low speed and a high speed uh, bait cast reel. Uh, these reels are uh, seventy dollars, so uh, great values for on 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 these products. They're lightweight. Both of them have graphite frames, and they're just a really good product to 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 learn on. And or if you need to buy, you know, four of four or five of them at at one time, uh, this is a great option. Also, uh, on the on the baitcaster, we also have a, a little line memo on the on the side here, also. So that, that's so nice. Like I, I now I'm just anytime I have a, you know, it's so nice being able to know what size line because you get in between like 15 and 17 or 17 yeah. to 20 or yeah, man, that it sucks trying to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting and, the micrometer so, out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for so long, everybody puts different color tapes they'll put a tape and they'll write on it so it's like that that's a, been a problem forever so i'm glad that you know all all of our product is starting to see 
that line memo stuff too. So Very cool. Well, you guys did that on the rods too. Going back to those rods, you guys put a, a label on there like finesse, uh, flipping, crankbait, stuff like that on there too, right? So just a, <clears throat> like a beginner could just pick up a rod. And, oh, this is going to be perfect for this finesse setup, or this will be perfect for a pitching setup, things like that too, right? Yeah, right, right. Our uh, so uh, so we have throttle, and then you move up to you move up a step to accurate. Accurus is another great family. We, we released that a couple years ago and that whole family has like the metal frame. So you kind of go from you know, your graphite, you go up to a aluminum frame with the real engine design and everything. Uh, all the cool little features like titanium bail wire, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so for 90, for a hundred dollars, you get um, a, another great starter pack basically of accuracy reels and there's reels there's combos and there's rods and all the rods and all the combos are made for very specific techniques and those techniques are written on the rod blank so that you could easily find what you need you say you need a drop shot rod we got a, a perfect rod for that and it's labeled you need a shaky head rod we got one for that cranking rod we got one for that so it's a it's a really user friendly for it's really user friendly for someone that is getting into the category wants to get serious um but still needs a little help navigating on what product to use because there's so much out there <clears throat> trying to pull this up to see if i can get the logo come on computer you're doing it you're doing it <laughs> you can do I, it. I have an accurate setup and i'm i'm really happy with that too it's it's a i, I think a I use that one for toads. It's it's like a braid setup that okay. I keep, and uh, yeah, I've I've had that since it came out, and it's you know I've had zero problems with it. It does exactly what it's supposed to. So I mean, for a two hundred dollar combo, that's you know it, it's definitely gets the job done. That's cool. That's definitely cool. Because some things, when especially when you're fishing in heavy grass or the muck, and you're getting in nasty kind of stuff, you you just don't want to use the highest end stuff, you know. There, yeah, is, yeah. there is a place for both lines in, in my lineup, you know. Right. And uh, with the Accurus rods, for example, we we have different grades of material for different products. And so some products we want e extremely lightweight. Um, and usually when you spend like 200 something dollars, you probably are going to take a little better care of your stuff. Hopefully. I mean, that would be I hope you take care of your stuff. But uh you there is a balance that you have to play if you want extremely lightweight you there might be a trade-off there um so what we do at quantum we come up with our own custom blends to really get a great balance so we have a whole i mean we have a, we have a whole series of different grades of material that we use um and then for like accuracy we know that some people are going to be using for kayaks. So they're going to be, those rods are going to be banging on the sides of the kayaks. They're going to be, you're going to get stuck in a, the, the tip of your rods going to get stuck in a tree limb when you're going underneath the tree. Um, so we try to He's match the materials. Around, for the man. <laughs> 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 so we really try to match the materials to the, the target consumer. And, uh, but so you got rod material, you got rod deflection that the the way the rod feels and bends that has a lot to do with technique. But also the small details are important too, like uh, guide spacing and more importantly the where the real seat lies. If you're going to go uh, top water or uh, jerk bait fishing when you're walking a bait, you don't want a really long rod butt that hits your stomach every time you 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 know try to jerk your cadence. So we adjust that you know or we have shorter rod length butts on those techniques on those rod with those techniques and uh cranking rod you you are you want something that you can rest and kind of crank and be comfortable when you have that really big load of the crankbait so uh we, we try to balance it <clears throat> with all the product that's super cool man yeah, I, really interesting yeah, so much stuff that goes into it that you don't even think of. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, that's why we talk to guys like Shane. <laughs> so we can <laughs> we can feel edumacated. <laughs> <laughs> as long as y'all are catching fish on, on our stuff, we're happy. So no, it's cool, man. I you know, I 
I never really think about it, but yeah, I got a couple beat up rods that I use for like certain, certain applications because I don't really care what happens to said rod, you know, um, if I'm fishing some pretty gnarly stuff or, you know, going to be fishing some heavy cover, you know, as far as like trees come down from the bank and stuff like that, I'd rather throw a cheap rod where I know I might get caught up and be yanking on it and end up snapping my rod. I'd rather snap a cheap rod than uh, one of my higher end, you know, sticks, so to speak. But so ha have you been able to meet all the pros on the team? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one easy place to, to meet them at is ICAST. They're all there. So I've, um, I've, I've hung out with them on, we sometimes we'll do like a little retreat where we all kind of hang out for a couple of days and, have dinner and, and things like that. So now we really do want to have, you know, feedback from all levels because those guys are really tearing our product up. I mean, they, they really put the most strain and that is one problem that we have is, you know, we had this great test lab, but to correlate um, what the test lab does to real life, you have to have that balance of both and to get feedback within a couple months, um, get enough wear and tear on a product in a couple months is really important. So that's where we rely on the, the pros to kind of get our feedback. And um, Gerald Spore, for example, was was talking to me about a, a couple things that he would like to see improved on a couple of products or a couple um, uh, different actions. And, and so we we really rely on those guys to to bring to bring feedback to us, and so we can tinker and give them something they can that we can help them them win, um, make their job easier. So Who's I don't, your favorite, I have to ask? <laughs> is, I can't. World, I can't uh, how about this? How about They're this? All, out of, okay. <laughs> out, of all, out of all the team guys, who's the quietest, who's the wild man, and who's the geek of them? Oh. There you go. <laughs> I really put you to the you, test. I, I, I don't know if I, I don't, I shouldn't answer that. They're all, they're <laughs> all great good. guys. <laughs> all right. They actually, they're all, they all have a pretty wild side actually secretly. Okay. You know, all right. so. I can see okay. Jesse um, Wiggins and him getting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's from up here. But, well, him and Matt, they both live. Yep. You know, not yeah. And, and, away. and Matt's killing it right now on the yeah, MLF today. tour. I mean, he's, geez, yeah. he's, yeah. I don't know. He's, he might've ended with 40, he had a 40 pound lead, I think. Uh, he was 50 pounds ahead for, at some point. Yeah, I saw that today. <clears throat> That's crazy. That's crazy, man. Well, uh, real quick, man, I know we're winding down, but there was one thing too like Quantum is also uh, Zepco as well. And you got a new Zepco reel out, right? Uh, for right, any right. The beginners or the kids or whatever. Yeah, well, um, so Zebco, you know, one of the most common things we hear, especially when, at ICAST, for example, people walk by, it's like, oh, I started on a Zebco, I started on 33, I started on 202. Um, but we've came, we've come a long ways at Zebco, and you know, the same test lab that develops quantum stuff, the Zebco products are going through there too. And um, so we have a new premium uh, spin cast reel. It's called the Bullet MG, which is right here, and uh looks like a, a few, rocket ship yeah, right a, a few years ago we came out with the bullet so the bullet is was our highest end product at 100 100 dollar spin cast but it's fully machined has a, the metal body metal front cover it has uh, ball bearings on the spinner head so that you uh one of the one of the common problems that you can see in spin cast is the drag being really smooth. So those ball bearings help with drag smoothness um, and castability. And um, <clears throat> so with that, with the whole reel being made of metal, that bullet was quite, it was pretty heavy. So what we did this year was come out with the bullet MG and you can see the uh, magnesium body is, is this in this champagne color. And this makes the, the reel 20% lighter. So you get the high gear ratio, um, which pulls in 29 inches per turn. So it's like a seven to one bait cast reel. You got the, basically the tangle free, um, no back, you know, it's not going to backlash or anything. 
uh, those technologies in this reel. We got a cool little uh, 3M. We worked on a, with the project on with 3M. So we had this special grip here that is kind of has treads in it. So if water gets on or anything, the water pushes out and moves out, and you can still keep that really tacky grip. Um, but for $130, um, this is our highest end spin cast, the fastest spin cast out there. Um, and you'll, you'll probably see a couple more spin cast reels coming out from other companies that have a really high gear ratio. Um, but the biggest trade off from gear ratio is the higher gear ratio, the harder it is to crank on the handle. And with Zebco's, hmm. you know, 70 years of experience, we've really have, we have a lot of patent technologies in this reel that help lower that torque that it takes to that, that cranking power torque. So, um, yeah, this is a great, uh, reel for those that don't want to get into the bait cast reel, but they still want to throw buzz baits. They still want to throw, uh, um, basically like jig heads and stuff and crank it back and throw the, uh, flip and pitch and stuff. So this real, this real really gets it done for those guys that don't, that are a little bit afraid of the bait cast world. Um, the, but there are some guys that like to use bait cast drills for skipping docks and then they really know how good their thumb works. And then they go back to this, this spin cast drill. You can skip under a dock and not have to worry about backlash. So I'm there's a place for it. <laughs> I might be too, man. I was just oh thinking about that, like screw That's all it. these backlashes. <laughs> I'm gonna throw some some 50 pound braid on a spin cast and just get it done. Oh, yeah, yeah, and and one thing with uh the new the front the front scan the forward scan that you know Garmin and everybody has now. Uh, those that are crappie fishermen, they want to throw out their little jig heads and throw it right on that school. And if they don't get bit, they want to race it back and try to throw it, throw it out again. So this, that's another place where these bullet reels come in handy is they can handle, you know, those type of situations when you're, you, when you're fishing for a school right in front of you and you're just trying to make those really quick pitches. So, uh, really opens up a whole nother world, uh, for, for beginners. So, so, so that's, that's like the, the top end for crappie guys. Huh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. What's that real run? This is a 130. And then our right. the bullets 100. Okay. Right on. Right on. What do you think, Dan? Are we going to switch over? Yeah, it's champagne color. It's the champagne of spin cast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Dude, this is uh this has been super awesome and educational. Uh and exciting uh to see all the new products you guys got coming out man i'm super stoked for you guys and uh i know what my like, kids getting for christmas yeah a couple <laughs> cu couple of smoke x reels <laughs> no it was new spin cast man. oh right on right on all it's right. been using a little you know a little zip you know the old yeah. ghetto zipco from walmart yeah yeah yeah, not ghetto you know the lower end yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, Move it, moving them up moving them like, up i like look, it dad i can do this and i don't Battle on backlash. No birds in us, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's coming. You know that's coming. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Sheen, is there uh, is there anything else you want to throw out there or talk about, man, that we may have missed or you want to cover um, before we uh, wind this down, brother? Uh, no, I, I really appreciate you guys um, having me on the show, and you know, I I. Um, I am going to start doing some, some strike King stuff here in a couple months. So maybe we can talk some lures in a future show. Oh yeah. Let's now you're it. talking. Yeah, absolutely. You're talking my language. <laughs> Dan go. just got excited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you taking the time out tonight, man. Um, hang tight real quick. Uh, Dan, thank you for sitting in for Mr. Randall. Yeah. Uh, man. Maybe we'll see you next week. Oh, I, I remembered. I have to go to Indy for a KFL game. I oh, gotta, I got to go up there and beat Sam Jones on his own. Oh, game. there you go. Uh, if that's the case, where can I place my bets? I don't want to Vegas. I don't think they, they cover. What's, the, and what's the spread? Because I, I'll I'll put my paycheck on you guys. We're fishing uh, them this week, too, here at home in Alabama. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's, it'll probably be close. 
They have a great team. Nice. Yeah, there's a couple hammers on both teams, but uh, that'll be That's interesting, fair. man. We'll we are leading the league, the yeah. Alabama Hammers. Yeah. yeah, you guys are undefeated, right? Undefeated, and we have the biggest point loss spread. Ooh, yeah. look at that. We're winning the whole, the whole league. The whole thing. Yeah. I like it. I like we'll it. See. We'll see. Knock on well, wood. Good luck, good luck this weekend, man. Stick them. Land them. Uh, Shane, thanks again. Uh, everybody watching at home, uh, we're here every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern, 5 o'clock out on the West Coast. You never know who will be up next. Uh, till next time, boys and girls, tight lines, smooth paddling. Peace.